Hello, my name is Nathan and over the New Year's and Christmas break, I had the opportunity of participating in Dan's Game Jam. If you haven't seen the video yet, link in the description, but if you've come from there, hello, welcome. And in this video, I want to share some of my experiences and takeaways I've had from participating in this jam. I've broken down my thoughts to about nine separate topics and any one of those you, which you might find relevant or interesting, you can just go to the timestamp and, and watch it. So without further ado, let's begin. I was initially quite nervous to join this game jam because the last one that I did um, was a few years ago. I think it was in 2019. Um, it was one of Valum's VR game jams and I did it in about a team of five over the course of about two weeks and we weren't able to get anything finished or done in time. Communication was kind of lacking, the time zones were were atrocious and we couldn't even figure out what the core, not only what the core mechanics were, but how those core mechanics worked. So overall, that experience was kind of a mess and having already been kind of not confident enough in making a game myself, I haven't really participated in many game jams because I just felt like I personally couldn't accomplish that goal. But during my break, uh, Two days kind of were open for me and I thought, you know what, let's let's give this a go. Let's see whether or not I can actually accomplish this. Let's have some growth. And honestly, I don't understand why I was so nervous. I think I still had the mindset from years and years ago when I was still learning to program and, you know, understand fundamentals. And also the fact that this game jam wasn't a game jam that we had to make everything from scratch. You know, I watched lots of game jams back, back in the day on YouTube where basically all the programmers are doing everything themselves and so they're like staying up all night to make this character controlled and all these other things work. Uh, luckily the rules for this gem was basically you have to use this asset pack, everything else is kind of free game and I felt more confident in you know searching up tutorials and being in my own space, being able to reference other projects for, for different scripts and stuff like that. And so if a game jam interests you, you like the idea and concept of it but you feel kind of nervous that you don't have the skills or talents for it, having a go at a jam where the restrictions aren't so tight might actually be a good idea for you to kind of get confident both in yourself and in your abilities. And look, my game's not perfect. It's been a few weeks now since I finished that game and looking back, I see a lot of issues both in terms of the design and also just the fact that there's so many unfinished things. Like it's not a fun game to play, I get that. And so if you have nerves like me, um, joining a jam or maybe even doing your own jam, giving yourself a deadline to finish something can be a good experiment and, and help you become more confident or at least gauge where your skill level is. If you can't finish something on time, or you feel like you don't have the skills or talents to do, for example, programming or art or whatever, then maybe collaborate with people, you know, network or something. But the thing that consoled my nerves the most is my next point, which is the excitement. Now, I think we all know as game developers the, uh, uh, how would I say this? We love starting new game projects. We have these new ideas and, you know, for me at least, I've had a thousand game project folders of completely unfinished games, but it's really exciting to go to the Unity Hub and make a new project and import some assets and play around. This is what game jams are for like the first half. It's just lots of exciting new things. It's really fun, for me at least it was, to uh, make an empty URP scene. You know, I've been working on my own game um, kind of on and off. Uh, for the past year now and that project whenever I open it's just I see the things that need to get done and I look at the errors that are plaguing my project but an empty project is just full of possibilities and, and has no stress it's just all potential and I think that's the thing that calmed my nerves the most in knowing that like Nathan look at this potential you have and what you can make now that excitement eventually wears out and you kind of have this plateauing in and out of of having drive to finish the project um, which leads on to my next point, which are breaks. And it's interesting because I did this game jam uh, in about 24 hours. I did about 12 hour days um, across two days. And with those two days, um, I got up at a reasonable time. Um, I had breakfast, I had lunch, I had dinner. Um, and I think it was on the second day, um, I went and shot some hoops with my wife, went to a park and we just played a bit of basketball together and it was really fun. Um, you know, those times as well where I stepped away. I think we also went out shopping or something. Like, I was able to do a lot of things within this game jam. Now, the deadline wasn't as strict as other things like, for example, the global game jam. But despite that, I still think it's incredibly important that we take breaks. I got to bed on time. I woke up at a reasonable time and I gave myself those proper time frames. And having those breaks and making sure that I was well rested made me so much better. I realized during this game jam, which I'm so glad I, I did now because of this, I can program when I am well rested. When I'm tired, which is most of the time when I work in my other game, Coco Loco, after work and whatever else life has thrown at me, 
Um, I'm not very good at programming because my brain is just mush. For the past year, I've kind of thought of myself as a really bad programmer just because I've made dumb mistakes and look at my code and go, oh my gosh, Nathan, what are you doing? I realize now having worked for two days with an active brain, I can actually program. I can understand programming concepts and I can write good code. It's just that I need to be in a more active mindset to understand it all. And so I'm not a bad programmer. I just didn't have the correct environment to actually be good at it. And so now I'm going to take this away and try and find ways in which I can have that same mindset when I'm trying to do my work on my other games. Now, speaking of doing my own work, this leads me on to the next point, which is working alone. One of the things that kind of terrified me is working alone with a deadline. Now, my other game, Coco Loco, I've um, had people come and go on the project, but most of it's been done independently. And I've been fine with that because I haven't had a necessarily big deadline. You know, this isn't something that is keeping the lights on in my house right now. It's kind of just a side project, a hobby, something that if I don't have time to do, it's not the end of it all. But when you have a stricter deadline and a project you want to get finished, for me, it was a lot scarier in working alone because one, I was scared of making wrong mistakes, not having the feedback there that I needed. And two, over scoping or assuming I could do something and then realizing I lacked the skill or knowledge to do it. I wouldn't have time to, you know, troubleshoot or do those sorts of things. Now, I didn't run into any of those things realistically, and there were also some perks in working alone. Now, I want to do a game jam collaboratively in the future. I, I would love to work with others just in general. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but there's parts of just of this experience I enjoyed talking with other devs. It's, it's really nice to network and talk with people who have the same interests as you. But for people who may feel alone and frustrated and just like, ah, I'm not getting anything done. I actually enjoyed making this game myself because all the decisions I made, I could just make myself. There was no trying to convince other people of my ideas. Um, there was, you know, my motivation was my own and I didn't need to kind of piggyback off anyone else or try to carry anyone else on the team. And there weren't any frictions when it came to, you know, ideas or setting aside tasks. Like, of course, I feel like I could have accomplished more with the team, could have divided and conquered the project and made something bigger and better. But at the same time, working alone does have its benefits. However, working alone led to the fifth point, which are the priorities. When you have a deadline that is like 24 hours, you really limit yourself to your scope and what you can do. And it helped me understand whenever I make any other game project now, you know, I'm trying to do this again with Coco Loco because it's not all there in terms of the game loop and any other new project I start before any polish, before any proper art or trying to do anything, you know, proper production wise, I realized that iterating quickly, getting in features quickly that just worked and playing around with things early on made the experience so much more fun, so much more enjoyable, and it made things easier to polish in the end because everything else was was done. You know, I, I wasn't adding in anything new. Everything that was there just needed to be tweaked or, or added upon. And one of the things that helped that a lot, which is a, an additional point, is working with an art uh, asset pack. Oh my goodness. Seriously, if you are someone who is just wanting to prototype your game to begin with, and you, you still want nice visuals, but you don't want to invest the time, Seriously, I 100% say this for your sanity and for helping in your future projects. You don't need to keep it forever. You know, you can adapt it or change it completely. You know, we've we got tools for that. But using an art asset pack saved me so much time. Okay, focusing on the design and programming and just play testing the game, getting everything else done without having to worry about art helped me so much and this isn't a shill to you know uh, the sponsorship of, of the uh, game jam collab okay I, I genuinely do believe that uh, like I'm going to have big asset packs now that have these sorts of things that I can just use as placeholders because obviously you need models and it does help to have something visual for you to see uh, in play testing but using someone else's art as a placeholder or just in general for the game Saved me so much time, so much, so much stress and effort, sore hands, you know, from drawing and modeling and doing all the other artsy fartsy stuff, helped me focus on my game. And once my game was fun to play, and in the future, when my game is fun to play, when I'm working on new projects, then I'll focus more on the visual aspect of the art style and whatever. But yeah, asset packs blew my mind at how much time it saved just, just in creating things and making it look beautiful early on, which which helped me, especially when trying to show it to other people or show it to my wife, 
no no complaints about the art because it was just using an art package it was like you know the art is already done this is the art and you know it's, a, it's an art asset pack so you know it looks good already now while working on this project um it made me feel something uh and that was project guilt i've been working on my other project for over a year now and i was really productive on oxygon um to the point where <laughs> I remember there's so many times during it where I was like, I'm getting so much done. My brain's so active. I'm just problem solving all these things in my code. Damn. Man, I wish I could use this in Coco Loco. I wish I could bring this drive into these other project, which would have, you know, longer term benefits. It's something I want to publish on Steam and whatever. But I feel so bad that I'm working on this game jam instead. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm wasting time. It wasn't a waste of time. Okay, I had to remind myself that it wasn't. You know, this is something that was bigger this opportunity was something that was bigger and also i needed this as an experiment and a learning experience to gain new insights i wouldn't have otherwise once my game was basically built uh, it was completed to the point where i was happy with the product the final product uh, um, you know again you can never be 100 percent happy with it but it was at a stage where i was like okay this is enough nathan anything more and and you know, I need that balance, okay? That that time investment was beginning to weigh in more than, you know, the value I was getting back from it. But then before the video came out, we actually shared each other's games um, and the little devlog experiences that we had. And I have to say, it is so hard not to be critical on yourself, um, to look at other people's work. You know, a lot of people were doing more creative things, you know, top-down, um, third-person stuff, like, and so, so many cooler things. I went, oh man, my game just looks like a really bad like um mobile clone or like unity template or or you know just something that i i mean i kind of did make something back in 2016 similar to this it's also on itch and i just looked at these other people's games and it was really hard not to be so hard on myself and be like nathan man you're not that good you really should like give up <laughs> or get a lot better because you're not at that point. And look, it's good to have that wake up call and kind of have that fire burning beneath you if it helps to motivate you. Um, it was a little bit crippling and it was a little bit, uh, it's just something that I haven't experienced yet because I haven't published a game in, in the sense of like, okay, the game's out there in the world, everyone can see it, play it. Boy, it, it it's, it's weird. It feels like you're giving a part of yourself to everyone else and if they enjoy it, it brings you such joy and you're like, oh, thank goodness they like that part of me. But if they have criticism or they don't like it or they think it's dumb, it, you kind of take it personally. Now, I'm fine. Like, you know, you guys can rip into this game. Uh, I'm, I'm a stone brick wall when it comes to criticism on the internet, basically, mostly. I mean, don't try to break me, please. But again, it was another thing that I learned and people who, and maybe those who haven't released their games out into the world and people who have, you know, really reacted to them might not realize that, when you make a game, you give a part of yourself to that game because a little bit of you is inside that game. You do take that on onto yourself. But look, overall, it was a great experience. And my, my favorite part, aside from just feeling that rush you get when a game's working really well for you, you know, when you're getting really productive and things and things are just clicking together, like that was, mm, that was a great feeling to have. Like when I got that car controller working, whew, Felt great, felt fantastic. When I set up the starting scene with like the the characters all laid out with, you know, all the different stuff, that was like, oh, I'm proud of that. I'm happy about that. But my, my favorite part of this experience has been the networking with others, talking with others, seeing other people's experiences and, and their games and their ideas. It's something that I kind of miss as someone who does this more independently and is in this room by myself in this jam I did by myself in this very room for 24 hours. Um, making games can be a very lonely experience and especially me, who, someone who comes from a background where I've had to do this myself and figure out all this stuff myself because no one else knew what to tell me, okay? I had to find and learn all these things on my own. Um, thankfully, we have the internet and thankfully I live in an area that is close to um, a great industry for games. It was great meeting and talking with people about game dev YouTube stuff and participating in this jam and, and doing all these sorts of fun things that I, I would love to do one day um, as, a, as a career, as a full-time job. Um, I had a lot of fun and thank you Dan so much for um, allowing me to participate in this. This has been a wonderful experience. Um, I hope to do more in the future and I've learned so much and I'm really grateful for it. Um, thank you all for watching through this video. 
uh, I guess my final words is, is to you all to play the games, to support those who, you know, we put a lot of effort into these videos. Thank Dan for all the work he's done. You know, he's managed to get a sponsorship. Uh, we hope you all enjoy it. We put our heart and souls into this and let's just grow this community even more. I think it is an amazing thing to see um, growth in game development. I, I've been watching people for ages now um, and, you know, hopefully now some of you can tag along this journey with me um, on game development on YouTube because this is just the beginning, okay? We're just getting started. So until then, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.